The art of making paper was a Chinese and Japanese mastery until the 8th century before moving to the Arabs. The Arabs see paper as an effective medium to propagate Islam. They generally used fiber from flax and hemp as raw materials. They also used cotton to improve the whiteness of paper. Cotton's cuticle, however, a kind of waxy sheet surrounding the cotton fiber, wasn't removed during the mechanical action of drumsticks. This prevents or restricts hydration and swelling of the fibers and inhibits interfiber bonds. Thus does not guarantee a quality paper. Arabs make the paper their number one communication vehicle. It is thanks to them the first great mass medium. Therefore, the spread westward of the art of making paper follows that of the Arabs. It is in Shiraz in 780, in Baghdad in 793, Sicily in 1102, Fabriana in 1276, and France in the early 14th century. The invention of typography based on the principle of movable type by Gutenberg increased the efficiency of printing and therefore the manufacture of paper. It becomes artisanal and mechanized by widespread cell mallets that operated by hydraulic power. Driven by a water wheel, these cells remained active from the middle of the 13th century until the end of the 18th century and the arrival of the Dutch cylinders or Hollanders. The Hahnemann mill crafted some of the most renowned and versatile papers in all of Europe for more than 400 years. In 1584, Duke Eric issued a proclamation that papermaker Merton Spice may establish a paper mill to supply his highness and his domain with fine handmade paper. Demand followed reputation and soon many European houses of nobility, including King George III of Hanover, became regular customers. In 1588, Queen Elizabeth I decreed the collection of disregarded rags for the use of papermaking. By the late 17th century, British workers sorted waste by hand and made a living recovering and selling any reusable materials they found. In 1673, the invention of the cylinder by the Dutch, which would later be called the Hollander Reader, is a major event for the pulping of rags in paper history. The new technique provides higher quality paper, less dry matter loss, and significant energy gains in comparison to cell mallets. It was not till the beginning of the 18th century to see these cylinders appear and develop in the rest of Europe. 1710 in West Germany, 1711 Prussia, 1726 in Switzerland, and 1750 in England, and around 1730 in France. To encourage the use of wool and at the same time save linen and cotton for papermakers, the English Parliament in 1666 decreed that only wool could be used in burying the dead. In one year, approximately 200,000 pounds of linen and cotton were saved for papermaking. At the end of the 18th century, the invention of the papermaking machine foreshadowed the rise of the extraordinary paper industry that began in the second half of the 19th century. This expansion quickly reveals the crucial problem of inadequate supplies of raw materials. This shortfall will then be one of the major causes of crisis contributing to the evolution and transformation of the stationer. Nicholas Louis Robert, a Frenchman who worked as a proofreader for the noted printer Pierre Francois Didot, was soon placed in charge of the accounting at Didot's Mill in Essonnes, France. While there, Robert conceived the idea of a machine to produce the continuous roll of paper to fill the urgent need for banknotes after the French Revolution. Saint Leger, son of Pierre Didot, encouraged Robert to use the mill's workshop and materials in the development of the paper machine. After five years of work in 1798, Robert invented a prototype of a machine on which paper was formed on a continuous sheet of wire cloth and was patented on January 18, 1799. Robert sold his patent rights to Saint Leger Didot for the sum of 27,400 francs. Didot took the models created by Robert to his English brother-in-law, John Gamble, who, with the help of Henry and Celia Ferdrinier, secured English patent 2487 for an improved version of the machine in April 1801. The Ferdrinier brothers invested up to 60,000 pounds and commissioned engineer Brian Donkin to build a new and further improved machine in 1807. Brian Donkin went on to gain financial security from his work on the paper machine. By 1851, he had designed a total of 191 machines, including 83 for British mills, 105 for Europe, one for India, and two for the United States. Today, most modern paper machines are still referred to as Ferdrinier machines. The difficulty in getting rags, whose prices are soaring, and the peak development of the press forced papermakers to seek new solutions for the supply of their raw materials. 
Until the 19th century, papermaking remained relatively unchanged from its introduction into Western Europe. The increasing demand for books forced papermakers to look for alternate raw materials and to increase production. In 1719, René de Remure presented the European papermaking industry with a theory of using wood for papermaking. Remure's dedication was based on the observation of wasps building their nests from partially decayed wood, which they obtained from trees or timber. Remure's observations went ignored until 1800, when English papermaker Matthias Koops published a book conveying the same thesis as Remure's. This too went ignored until 1839, when Frederick Gottlieb Keller discovered how to make paper from wood. However, the idea of using wood for papermaking was not new. The Chinese used bark fibers and bamboo to make their paper. Wood pulp continues to be the major staple for papermaking today, as it has for the last two centuries.